Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the Eco Hitch Trailer Hitch Receiver on the 2023 Subaru Impreza. Now this is what your hitch is going to look like when it's installed on your Impreza. And the great part is it's a hidden cross tube, meaning the only thing that you're going to see hanging outside of the vehicle is going to be the safety chain loops and the 2 inch by 2 inch receiver tube opening. And that's something I'll point out. Some of the other options for the Impreza are only inch and a quarter and have lower weight capacities where this one being a 2 inch by 2 inch really opens it up for a lot of different accessories. Whether you're using a bike rack, a ball mount, or a cargo carrier, you're going to have tons of options available. All of those are gonna stay in place with a 5 8 pin and clip. Uh, the hitch does not come with a pin and clip. A lot of times your accessories will come with one when you purchase them. If you wanna pick up a locking version, if you plan on leaving your accessories on your vehicle, you can lock that in place and know that no one's gonna walk away with it. You can choose from a bunch of different options here at eTrailer. Now, if you plan on pulling a trailer, your safety chain loops are a plate style that are vertical, which makes it nice and easy to hook up a standard S hook. Even a larger clevis style is gonna go on here with ease. Now, speaking of towing a trailer, you're gonna to wanna to adhere to the weight capacities of the hitch, which this one's actually pretty solid. You have a gross trailer weight rating of 3,500 pounds, which is gonna be the weight of the trailer plus the accessories loaded onto it. Now, you also have a pretty solid tongue weight coming in at 525 pounds, which is the downward pressure that's put on the inside of the receiver tube opening. So that's gonna be more of your suspended accessories like your cargo carriers or bike racks. And with that weight capacity, you could probably get away with a four bike bike rack on here with no problem. Now with those weight capacities, that doesn't mean that the vehicle can tow that much weight. So you do wanna check the vehicle's owner's manual to see what it's capable of towing. Uh, and take that into account and compare that with the hitch numbers and also any of the uh, accessories you'd be using like your ball mount or ball to make sure that you're not overloading any of those. Now a quick measurement from the center of our hitch pin hole to the furthest point of our rear fascia. We're looking at about two inches and that's gonna be important for your folding accessories like your cargo carriers or bike racks. When they're in a stowed position, you wanna make sure they're not gonna make contact with your fascia. And with this measurement, I think you should be okay. Just keep in mind, you may not be able to open up your hatch with that in the stowed position, but I don't worry about it making contact with the rear fascia. Now, as far as ground clearance goes from the top of the receiver tube opening to the ground, this one comes in at 13 inches, which is pretty solid. Uh, something to keep in mind though, when you have your suspended accessories like cargo carriers or bike racks, it extends the vehicle. Uh, so as you go up an incline, that's gonna wanna tilt towards the ground. So just keep that in mind when going up uh, some pretty steep inclines or maybe speed bumps or rocky or rough terrain. That measurement's also gonna be important if you do plan on towing that trailer because you can determine whether you need a rise or a drop. Uh, you can just measure the coupler of your trailer and make sure that it's even with that 13 inches. And then you can account for a rise or drop by picking up a ball mount that suits it perfectly. Now, when it comes to installation, this one does require the fascia to come off the vehicle. It's not really that hard to get this one off compared to some other vehicles. You do have to lower down the muffler, but overall, this is a fairly easy installation. You just take your time and follow along with this video to make sure you get it installed. The other option available here at eTrailer is gonna be the Kurt, which is a uh, inch and a quarter class one. So you lose capacity and you have an inch and a quarter receiver, which kind of limits you when it comes to picking up accessories. So I think a little bit of extra work on the install portion is totally worth having the higher weight capacities and also that two inch receiver tube opening. But speaking of that installation, I'll walk you through all the steps. So follow along and we'll get your hitch installed. To begin our installation, we're gonna open up our hatch and that way we can gain access to our tail lights. And we're gonna be removing these plastic covers to get to the hardware. Now at the bottom portion, there's a little slot that allows you to uh, get a flathead screwdriver. I'm gonna be using a trim panel tool here, but similar concept, we're just gonna pry these. Now, just keep hold of all of your hardware. I do recommend having a nice organized spot to keep it uh, because as we're pulling stuff off, it's gonna make that reinstallation that much easier if we have everything available. So once we pop those off, that's gonna give us access to the two 10 millimeter screws on each tail light. So we'll go ahead and get those removed. Now with that hardware out, we should be able to just kind of get these loosened up by just kind of wobbling it back and forth. And that's gonna allow us to get this to slide off. Uh, you have these alignment tabs here, uh, so you're going to want to pull it straight back. You don't want to pull it at an angle and damage those clips. Now at this point, we're going to separate the tail light by unclipping it from the electrical connection. Just push down on that tab and we should be able to get this to separate. We'll go ahead and repeat the same process on the other side. Now underneath the fascia, there's going to be four plastic push pins on each side. So just kind of start here in the middle. 
kind of on the uh, outside of the muffler here. And these have four different slots that you can uh, put a flathead screwdriver or a trim panel tool. I like the trim panel tools because you can kind of separate this and pry it out. Um, but make sure you keep these handy. Uh, just take your time. And if they do separate, just make sure you grab both pieces um, and then we'll be able to put those back in. So I got these four popped out and then we'll be doing the same on the other side. And then we're going to head up to our wheel well. Now that's where we're going to find this plastic push pin that's attaching the fascia um, to the rear quarter panel. It's right at the corner here. It's a little smaller. There's only two slots here. So we'll get this one separated. And the instructions say that you need to remove the one that's in the felt wheel well liner. I don't think that's necessarily the case. So uh, I'm going to omit that for now. Uh, but with this popped out, we're about ready to get our fascia taken off. So you might want to grab an extra set of hands. And something that uh, I do just to kind of prevent any scratching from occurring while taking the fascia off, but also putting it back on, take some painter's tape and just run it along this seam on both sides. Uh, again, this is just to kind of help make sure that the clear coat doesn't get scratched as sometimes this can kind of rub back and forth as you're putting it back in place. I got Joe here helping me to get the fascia off. The big part is, is it can get pretty big and you don't want this to scratch as you're doing it. So to get this popped off, it's actually pretty easy. Just kind of lightly pry back. There's going to be some plastic clips and just slowly make your way with your fingers. Don't put a lot of force here. It should come off fairly easily. And if you need to kind of grab below and that's a good way to separate these ones by the tail light. And then once we have this popped off, uh, we'll just set this aside for later reinstallation. Now we're going to remove our bumper impact beam and it's going to have three bolts or nuts on each side. They're going to all be 14 millimeter. You're going to want an extension here because you'll be shooting through the holes here on the impact beam to gain access. You could probably get them with a ratcheting wrench too. That's a good option, uh, but we'll go ahead and get these removed. Now something I'll recommend as you're uh, getting one side off, I'd leave a nut with a few uh, threads there or a bolt either way. That way it's going to support it when we get the other side. That bumper beam is not going to drop on us. So I'll go ahead, take off the ones that I just kind of left on a thread. And this does come down, uh, so make sure you're supporting it. and. Uh, now we're going to be reinstalling this later, so you don't need to set this too far away. Um, so we'll just set it off to the side for now. We do need to remove these plastic bumper hanger brackets. So this is kind of a recessed plastic push pin here. So just kind of pry in the center there. And with that removed, it's just got a little clip here. So slide it up and set these aside. Now we do need to lower down our muffler to give us access, but you're going to want to support the exhaust because once we take it off the isolators, it's going to want to hang down and that puts a lot of stress on the rest of the exhaust. Um, so if you're doing this in your driveway or in your garage, just you could put a block of wood or cardboard box, something to just support it. Since we're on a lift here, I'm going to be using a cam buckle strap and I'm just going to create a cradle here and run this across. There's going to be three isolators that we're going to need to pop off. We have the two that are on the end here. They're nice and easy to get to. Uh, but then as you go up right past the rear differential, there's also one. Um, so to get these off, most of the time they're fairly easy. You can use a, a long flat head or a pry bar and you can kind of wedge this in and just kind of with some leverage get this to pop off. Now if it's fighting you at all, you can use a soapy water solution to just kind of help lube it up a little bit and that'll make it to where it pops off a little bit easier. You can separate it from the top or the bottom, doesn't really matter. Now there is one more that I found, so where the exhaust kind of curls back on the driver's side, there's also one on the back side of the muffler, so go ahead and get that one removed as well. Now on each side of the frame rail, there's going to be some rubber plugs, and that's where we're going to be passing our hardware through. Uh, we're going to be utilizing the two outside holes here, the middle one we won't, but to make sure that the hitch sits nice and flush, I'm going to go ahead and just remove all of them. Um, and this is going to allow us to pass our hardware through the frame rail. Now, sometimes you can use your fingernail, but if not, you can use a flat head here to just pry those out. Now we're going to be feeding the hardware through this hole and the rear one's a little bit tricky to get to. So we'll be using the fish wire that's included uh, and pretty easy here. You're going to take the coiled end 
and start at this forwardmost hole and just feed this back towards the opening where our bumper beam was. And then we're going to take our hardware and we're going to set them all up the same. So we have the internal tooth washer and then a spacer block on our bolt. So we're just going to thread this on here. Pull that through and that's going to drop this down. Now save the fish wire for the other side. Um, it looks like this rear hole should be pretty easy to just drop that in. So with that in place, we'll just go ahead and repeat on the other side. Now with an extra set of hands, we're going to lift our hitch in place and we're going to get our hardware uh, in place as well. So you might want to have that handy. Now we're going to be doing a double flat washer, then a split washer, and then the nut. So it might help to just kind of get one started with the nut to hold in place, making it easier to get your hardware uh, without having to kind of feed all of those up at one time. So with that raised up in place, I am going to just put the nut here again, because that's going to at least support it and then I can get that rear one in place no problem. So with it held up in place now I can slide our uh, two flat washers and our split washer. Now make sure you don't push that bolt back up in the frame rail. Uh, you may have to kind of lift the hitch to get it to drop down enough to get those threads started. But same thing, just kind of get a few threads going and that way it supports it. And then we can go back and get the uh, washers put back on the other bolt. Now you might have noticed trying to get the nut started, that bolt wants to spin around uh, on the spacer block up there. So uh, to give you a little bit of a tip here, what you can do is you can put your washers in place and then just kind of push on them to kind of hold the uh, bolt in place. And that way you can get this started. And once you kind of draw it up with your hand, it's going to help a little bit. You may need to put some pressure, uh, kind of pull down as you're tightening it. Um, and using an impact, it'll zing it up pretty good. So. Uh, just make sure you get some threads started on all of them. Now with a 7th, 8th socket, we're going to go ahead and tighten these down. We're going to come back with a torque wrench here shortly, so just kind of snug this up to draw the hitch up into place. So now with that same socket, we're going to take our torque wrench and using the torque settings found in the instruction manual, we'll get these all torqued down properly. It's going to be important. It's going to make sure it's going to be tight enough for the lifespan of the hitch, but also not too tight, putting stress on the hardware. So go through and tighten these down. Now in the instruction manual, they're going to give you dimensions to be able to cut this out, to slide over just the top portion of the hitch. Um, and that's a good baseline, but honestly what I like to do just to make sure that it's perfect and as tight as possible as far as uh, not cutting off any more than we need to, I'm going to just kind of push this against it and just make sure it's nice and centered up. And then from here, I'm just going to uh, make a little mark here for a visual reference and then we'll trim as necessary, but this is gonna keep it nice and tight right around our hitch. So taking a look at the instruction manual versus what I found, it's pretty close, so you can use that, uh, and that's gonna be, I mean, pretty tied up where we're gonna be cutting anyway. So I use painter's tape just to make sure that we have a nice clean edge. Uh, it makes, gives me a line that I can follow as well. As far as cutting it out, you can use a utility knife, you can use a Dremel, whatever uh, cuts through thin plastic. Uh, but once you cut that out, just go ahead and make sure you get all the burrs knocked off and then test fit it to make sure that it's good to go. With that trimmed, it sits nice and good. I also double checked to make sure that those plastic bumper supports line up. Um, and it does seem a little bit tight uh, on the far end of the fascia where it hits against the safety chain loops. May need to trim that, but uh, I think we should be able to get this back in place. So just in the reverse order that we took it off, get your rear fascia put back on. And that was a look at installation of the Eco Hitch trailer hitch receiver on a 2023 Subaru Impreza.